Welcome to James and IT. Today we're going to be talking about how to create effective documentation and how it's ultimately going to help you in your career as well as in your job to become an effective IT professional. Documentation is something that's not really loved among a lot of IT professionals. And it's understandable. It's kind of more of the boring side of IT, but it doesn't have to be. Matter of fact, IT documentation should be something that you really enjoy because it's vitally important skill set for you to master in your career. And it will set you apart from others in your job, in your company. Not to mention, it helps ultimately you more than does anyone else, as you'll see as we discuss things. First thing is, why is it so important? Well, have you ever worked on something? Six months later, you gotta go back to it. Eight months later, year later, you know, it could be the next day later. And it's like, okay, how did I do this thing? You know, you're scratching your head, trying to remember, okay, what did I do? How did I do this? Well, if you have good documentation, you don't have to wonder. You just pull up the documentation and be able to see. That's why rule number one with documentation, it doesn't matter how good you write your documents. If you can't find it, it's completely worthless. So use something you're comfortable with. Organize your data. Use something that you can search. I typically don't recommend writing things down with a pen just for the fact that you can't search a piece of paper and if you misplace it it's gone you can take notes with pen and paper if that's what's more comfortable but put it into a system that you can then search and then find another thing is make sure that when you create documentation that you mean for the team that you mean to be consumed by your team at a later date you write it in a way with others in mind now you don't have to go in such detail where the janitor can come in and start doing your job no that's that that's a waste but what you should do is create documentation that any educated person in your role can know now there may be things that you know everyone has different levels of knowledge so there may be some things that need to be highlighted in more detail but that's where you create a documentation standard to help you. Now, there's a couple different documentation standards out there, such as Diaxis and DeVio, but among others. But honestly, they're all very, very similar. Let me show you this. So, as you see from this image, there's four main categories, tutorials, how-to guides, explanation, and reference. The way this is organized is to allow anyone in your team to understand what goes where and when. So as you can see on the one side, these things such as tutorials and explanation are more useful when studying a particular subject. So these are gonna be more detailed. They're more learning and understanding oriented. So when you have the tutorial, that's like creating a document that someone needs that has never done something before. You create a step-by-step -step tutorial to allow them to learn. And then you link things to explanations of those things. And they don't have to be very long. They can be actually quite brief. And that allows you to help that person learn what they're doing and why. Now on the other side, we have things that are, as you can tell here, most, most useful when we're working. That's things like how-to guides and reference material. So for example, what does the server do? That's a reference. That can then link into tutorials on how this server was set up, an explanation of this is why we did these things for this department. And the how-to guide could be, this is how we configured it for these things and this is what you can do if you run into this error or that error. So you can see all these areas work together. Now, this is not a hard coded standard that you need to follow in your team. What I recommend instead is use this as a template. Make it your own within your department. 
because every department's going to tweak things a little differently and make things different for their best use case. And that's why I recommend for you, this documentation here for a Devo or Diaxis, it's, it's pretty much the same. I'm gonna to link to both of these websites here in the guide, but it's, as you can tell, this image that we just had up on the screen is from Devo, but it's the same one that we have for Diaxis. But you can use either of these as your template for creating your own documentation system. And what I like about this is it allows you to jump into, okay, tutorials, how-to guides, reference guides, explanations about the structure. This has some more details in it as well. And that's why I'm gonna to link to both. But use these as a template to create your own documentation standard. In other words, what your documentation does, where you're going to put it, and how it's going to flow. And then make sure that your whole team is on board with this because if someone misunderstands, they might be putting a tutorial in a how-to guide. Likewise, you may find in your example, you don't need four pillars. You may need three tutorials, how-to guides, and explanations. You may just need two how-to guides and references. That's it. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, use these templates to create your own documentation flow. This makes it easier for your team to find things, better understood what documentation is required of them to make sure that it's usable, and so they know how it's structured so they can find the things they need. The next step is whatever pillars you, you use out of this, make sure out of these four here, make sure you create, you know, whichever ones you use, make sure you create standards for those documents. So how to guide, you want to have certain information structured in every single how to. You wanna make a template for explanations, a template for references, a template for tutorials. It doesn't have to be extensive, but giving someone a template to follow helps make sure your documentation standard is followed better. And by all means, whatever you do, make sure if you adopt the system straight out, link to it so everyone knows where it's at. But document it yourself in your own documentation system. This is how we're doing things. This is why. This is how you can do it. Things like that. And that'll help get everyone on the same page, which is vitally important. Now, what about your own personal documentation? Well, you can follow a similar system, but this is where personal documentation is so key. I don't know how many times I worked on a system over the years. I'd be building it out and trying to go step by step. And then I have to write the documentation afterwards. I was just learning how to do this thing. And I'm like sitting there, okay, what step did I do? How did I do this? Oh yeah, I ran into this error. So I need to, you know, it makes your documentation real choppy. Note taking is a vital skill as well. Create documentation as you go. Documentation is never a static thing. Documentation 100% is a living, breathing entity in your organization, including your own documentation. You can use tools such as Notion, Microsoft Loop, if you've got Microsoft 365, Notepad, or my personal favorite is Obsidian. Obsidian is a free open source application and you just put your documentation library, it's all marked down. So it makes it real easy to link to things and be able to find information. And for it's, it's a mind dump is really how a lot of people refer to it. It allows you to easily pull up that information in the future so you know what to, where you can find things. But the best part is, is as you're doing things, you can be writing documentation down and then you've already created your document as you went. You're tweaking it as you go, as you're learning things. And some things that I've had to do in my past is I've gone through and created it, but then it's just a matter of copy pasting and cleaning it up a little bit. Sometimes you wanna go through it again, just to make sure that it's right. Because the last thing you want is eight months later or a year later, you try and sit down and do the exact same thing. And all of a sudden, oops, can't do it. 
something else that's great to do in your team for finding effective documentation is things such as linking to those documents. So like for example, in our internal wiki we had for my department, what we did was we linked any service account we created we put the wiki link for that service account in the servers. We had a certain area that we put a text file where we would link to that documentation. That way, whether you're on a command prompt or within a GUI or what have you, we could see what those links are and be able to pull them right up and see exactly what we're looking at where. By linking those things together, it makes it so much easier to find what you're looking for and be able to, to leverage that. Now let's talk a little bit about tools. We kind of touched on some personal tools, but let's take a look at some group tools. Like I mentioned, GUIs or wikis are absolutely fantastic. I love wikis. Wikis have been the gold standard for a lot of internal IT documentation for a long time. Uh, there's ones like Guru is a very popular wiki that you can look at. Media Wiki is one of my more personal favorites when it comes to hosting a wiki internally, as well as Doku Wiki. Find a wiki that works for you. More of a newcomer to the block, so to speak, it's only been around for a few years, is Bookstack. Bookstack is a fantastic tool for creating your own knowledge base where you can set up books, chapters, pages. It's a very, very nice way to flow your documentation and help build your templates and things. And this is a completely free open source system that you can leverage. Now, if you're part of like Google Workspace, they have their own tools. You can build internal websites. Microsoft 365, same difference. You can build SharePoint sites. SharePoint has a wiki within it. So you don't have to pay for any of this stuff if you've already got it. It can be as little set up as click and you're, you're on. Teams has its own wiki built in. You'll, but it doesn't matter what tool you use, make sure you use some kind of tool. Now, that comes to the next aspect. How to keep your documentation up to date. Well, whenever you're messing with anything internally, a service account, creating new accounts, what have you, it's important that you make it part of your process for you and your staff to go and update that corresponding documentation. Why, when, how, what tickets are tied to it, things like that are all important things that you should be documenting. Set aside, it doesn't take much, a few minutes after every task for documentation where your team can quickly go in and update things if they need to. If they need more time, let them take the time they need in order to get things documented correctly. Now, another part of this though, is when you're updating documentation, maybe you haven't touched a document in a long time, that's the other half of the issue. You know, you're creating all this documentation and you're keeping certain things updated, but then you have stale documents. What I typically recommend is a lot of these tools that we just talked about, they have built-in reminders where they can remind your team. You can put in workflows and have it call your Slack channel or Teams channel or send an email. There, there's all of the big players have automations that you can implement for easy reminder of in your documentation and say, okay, for this type of documentation, we're going to set up a reminder that it messages us in a year. You know, what we used to do uh, back in my department, we didn't have Microsoft 365 at the time. Uh, this was several years ago. So what we did was we just had a shared calendar and we updated that and we would link the shared calendar event into the document itself. That way we can link back and forth. You notice we used a lot of links. It was great because we never had to go searching for anything that we were looking at. You just linked right into there. So whatever process that you use, again, there is no wrong way of doing this. Try away. If it doesn't work, you can always try another. If it already has it built in, fantastic. Use it, leverage it. If it's something that you need to create, or maybe you don't like it and you want to use something internally, such as a shared calendar, that was basic as what ours was, great. As long as you have something to remind you. So if a document hasn't been touched in so long, that way every document is touched. At least what I typically recommend is at least once a year, every document should have a look at. 
That way you keep your entire library alive. And you can typically run, easily run reports and see, okay, what document hasn't been touched in so long? And we would generate tickets. Okay, we've got a handful of, of KB articles that are out of date. So, because they're past the year, let's revisit those and make sure nothing got missed by mistake. Because teams get busy, people forget. So many times I've been updating a document, somebody walk up to my desk, I have to stop, help them out with their issue, and then come back to my document only to forget what I was doing or later on that day. Remember, oh shoot, I need to update that. You know, that happens to all of us. But remember with those reminders, that helps you stay on top and keep your documentation straight. So I hope you loved and enjoyed our short video today on how to create documentation for your IT department. Please remember to like and subscribe to our videos for more information and we'll see you in the next one.